right guys part two of the build saga um so the uh, obviously in the last video you've you've seen that uh, we've got um the majority of the engine back together painted a lot of ancillaries now has to go back on um sneak peek uh i'm a little bit ahead um also another sneak peek that's a different gearbox but that's for another video that's uh keep an eye out for that one that's uh, once the engine's done that's the next thing i'm getting on to um and uh, there's a interesting story behind it as well but so quick update then um as i've gone to refit a couple of parts um this being one of them the aftermarket tap for the heat control for the inside of the uh, the car i don't know whether you'll see it i don't know whether this camera will focus properly but the bottom of it disintegrated on me when i took it off completely and utterly disintegrated so i don't know that you can see but it's not even flat so with the greatest will in the world the uh, gasket ain't gonna hold that on so what i've done is i ordered some new parts had to wait for a little bit um and in those new parts i'm um, trying to undo things with one hand me being a man multitasking is not a good thing uh, I have got a ESM remanufactured cable driven heater control valve because it's in the car anyway um, but it was removed obviously when these tend to fail but this is remanufactured to a very high standard it's not made in China it's made in the UK so um, that's going to go back on it uh, the eagle-eyed viewers of you um, will have probably noticed uh, where did I put them? Yes, we'll probably have noticed that when I put the oil filter back on, there was no gasket. And that's because uh, this has got a spin on oil filter uh, conversion on it. And when I took the engine apart, stripped it all down, I forgot that the gasket kits that I've ordered won't have the spin on oil filter gaskets. So I've ordered a couple of those just in preparation for the next time I've got to strip it down. Um, so I'm going to whip that off, um, stick a gasket back on it, put it back together um, and then stick this heater tap on. Um, I've got a brand new uh, oil filter to go on there. Um, the old one's not actually that old, it's only probably covered about five, six hundred miles, but because of the metal in the engine, I'm going to change it anyway, just to be safe. Um, so, yeah, got to get those back together, basically bunging up the holes so that there's nothing exposed ready for when it goes back in the engine. Um, back in the engine? Back in the car, even. Uh, so, we'll get on with that now. So, I'm going to do this bit live because I think everybody knows how to change an oil filter and everybody has their own unique way of doing it, but uh, I'm going to do it this way. So, I've already put the dizzy um, back in um, and I'm not going to take it back out again just to do this. So, what I need to do is undo that, undo these two bolts and then that whole thing will come off. And then I can change the oil filter and put it all back together. So let's get on with that. I just need to find the right size. Do hickeys. It's never the first one you go to, is it? Never the first one. Now, I used to get good at this. I used to know which ones were size, but because this is uh, Old English and or Imperial. It's uh, a little bit confusing. Now I've got some High Lamar Blue on this because I just wanted to get the filter on to bung up the hole. Um, try and keep the moisture out because this isn't exactly the driest garage in the world. And I've also been rotating the engine um, every few days just to keep the assembly lube because it's full of assembly lube 
moving around the engine. So it's um, definitely not the most ideal of circumstances, but uh, it is absolutely fine. So. Off. Yeah, it's got some Hylamar blue on it. Um, like I say, I just wanted that on it so it uh, stops the. Um, oh, bloody hell, have I put that rag? I literally just had it. What a terrible memory. I tend to put things down and forget where I've put things. I'm sure, it's my age. Anyway, so we'll get a nice new gasket on there. I don't need to add any more Hylamar blue but what I will do is just peel the loose bits off. And I say this isn't necessarily the correct practice and you guys out there in YouTube land may know a better way of doing these sort of things but this is how I've always done it. I've never really had any problems apart from when I've made a silly mistakes, but that's when you learn how to do things, isn't it? Oh, I found the cloth now. Um, so, this kit is actually sold by ESM. Um, I've bought a lot of stuff off ESM actually, I find them very good. It's not sponsored, it's all paid for, but um, I do find their service very good. Like, I um, I ordered this uh, gasket set and all of these little bits on uh, when was it Friday at one o'clock uh, and they arrived this morning this is Saturday at, uh, just before 11 so I'm very impressed There is no torque settings for these because the blocks are slightly different you also can't torque them up to the same spec as the original oil filter because um, it's an aluminium housing so I'm just going to pinch them um, God, I can't multitask um, I'm just going to pinch them up uh, and make sure that they're nice and tight um, done up as they say to two clicks of the wrist that um, little impact wrench that you see me use uh, don't panic about it over talking it's a Sealy um, 12 volt thing and it's got no power at all it's gutless um, but it's great for little jobs like this where you don't want to Break bolts off. The only drawback is the battery is rubbish. Um, I, uh, I've, I've had it probably a few years now, but um, yeah, the battery uh, I've got this and the electric rain, um, uh, what they're called ratchet. Um, I've had them for a few years now and in that kit I got four batteries and out of all of them only one battery still works so it's not very good um, I think the majority of my stuff is Ryobi and yes I know it's not the best stuff out there and there is better makes out there but <coughs> um, I find them to be very reasonably priced and good tools and my, my big impact wrench this one here is just an absolute beast and I've had DeWalt's, Makita's, Clark's um, and nothing it is a patch on what that one is so um, I just find them very good uh, so I think I might uh, at some point have to upgrade these two little um, little Sealy tools to the uh, uh, Ryobi stuff because Ryobi does it in half inch three eighths 
um, and they also do a little impact as well. So, go check the car clean quickly. Carcoon's inflated now, I've just been messing about with Mindy, so um, I was just checking it is inflated okay, and now I can shut the outside world out. Um, this is my uh, A series crankulator, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit of a beast. I don't know whether you can hear that, but that's spinning over nicely, dizzy cap's turning nicely, obviously it's all going to want to, um, it's all going to want time or not, but uh, I just like to keep them turning. Now I've got the spark plugs in, but they're not all the way in, and they need cleaning. Um, uh, I just wanted them in there again, just to bung the holes up, so... I'll give them a clean before we use them. And I'm waffling. Uh, right, let's change this oil filter. I use my, my daughter's uh, uniform that she's kindly uh, donated to me. Um, just uh, been promoted at work and going through some training, so the uniform's no longer valid. So, fortunately. I've ended up uh, with the outcast. I mean, that filter looks really good. It's almost a shame to change it, to be honest. But we will. We will put a nice new oil filter on it. Um, now, I don't know whether, uh, presumably, if you're watching this video, you've got a Morris Minor or you've got an A-Series engine. Now, uh, any of you might know the original, um, the original oil filters for these are unbelievably difficult to change. Now, there's going to be people out there that say, no, they're not really easy, or oh, it's dead easy, dead easy. Yeah, it might be on a ramp, but you're rolling around on a... Uh, on your drive, they are not easy. Um, and you tend to put them all back together, fill them up with oil, and then all of a sudden you'll start the car and it'll be pissing oil out all over the floor. And So these, um, these, um, oh God, I'm, I'm doing it again, I'm, I'm waffling. Um, these uh, spin on oil filter kits are, um, are dirt cheap. They're, uh, yeah, the um, these spin-on kits. I think uh, again, it's ESM. I think it was about twenty-nine pounds for the whole thing, and that included the filter. Uh, you know, I think that's just remarkably good money, uh, value for money, and they're easy to get. The filters are four quid. That, by the way, is the gasket that comes in the kit in the gasket kit if you buy it off Mars or wherever you may get your gaskets from that's for the original oil filter system because it's it's bigger it's physically bigger the new one is is a smaller unit so obviously that's no good because um, it would leave a great great big gaping hole in the top of it so that's done uh, stick spare gaskets I've got a big box of stuff since uh, having classic cars. I've got a big box of bits that are just full of various car bits that I've accumulated over the years. Um, it's, it's quite funny really. Right, so, heater bit. Can you see the heater bit? That's up here, just there. Yes, you can. Okay, let's pull the engine over a little bit. Get a little bit closer for you. Uh, the alternator was new not long ago as well. Um, I'll give you a little bit of history about the car, really. Uh, electronic points, they're not great. They're uh, from a well-known manufacturer, but they are an absolute pig to set up. 
um, but I always carry a spare set of points in the car because uh, they're like pennies so worst case scenario it packs up you just swap it back over um, I moved to the alternator because I use this car daily pretty much um, so I wanted the reliable charging of, of an alternator the dynamo worked and it was brand new in fact I've still got it it's in the box uh, so I can always put it back together if I needed to but I wanted the reliability of an alternator water pump was uh, new when I did the head gasket so that's not that old thermostat was new when I did the head gasket last um, so there's quite a lot of new components in this has had new bearings, new thrust bearings bottom end bearings um, new gaskets, new bushes uh, what else does it add? loads, all sorts um, this has got a caper gasket on it but the one that comes with the new heater is actually a better gasket so I'm going to take this one off and use the better gasket because that's much yo better arrow um, interesting question for you when I got this car or I've had this car for a while now, um, it had the fan and, and obviously I've stripped it down and the fan only has one blade now there's a few muggies that I've seen that have only got one blade yet my sister-in-law's Austin A30 E5 has got two blades now was the Morris Minor had because the radiator was so big did it only require one blade or should it have two blades and something's happened just let us know in the comments because I'm interested I'm going to clean that up and paint it because it looks minging so I want to make it look pretty um, right, I'm just chatting shit now because I'm trying to uh, put a new sump plug on it while I remember uh, new sump plug washer sorry while I remember The gasket kit comes with two of these, so that's good. If you uh, the crush ones, you see. So if you uh, anything goes wrong like this, obviously with it being a, a rebuild after uh, so long, I'll get the right spanner size. After so long, um, I'll dump the oil and put fresh oil and filters on it. Um, Um, so that we flush out any of the uh, new oil because obviously in there there's a load of uh, assembly paste and uh, I don't want uh, the assembly paste in there forever it breaks down in the oil obviously but then it changes the viscosity of the oil so we'll uh, get that right okay so the tap these are which way these are supposed to go Oh now, that's a crazy question. Anyone tell me? Oh, no, you're not here, are you? So, does it go that way? Or does it go that way? And the studs are a little bent, I think. So. Now it, uh, it stepped off, so it must go on that way. I have to just give that a little bit of subtle persuasion. Don't judge. This is not your car, don't forget. So if you don't like it, I apologise. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of persuasion. Do 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 do. Helps if I give the persuasion equally, of course.
yes I'm using a very light um, non-impact thing. Terrible with that. Sure, we're giving loads of eyes. There we go. Make sure we know it's a nice tight fit. Now, I suppose it's my own fault. I should have, I should have bought a new set of uh, studs, really. But um, I didn't have them in stock. I'm impatient, so I didn't bother, but I'm sure we'll be able to create new threads. Everything will be absolutely fine, and this will definitely not leak. Probably will. What? Honestly, these blue point spanners are shit. I've got um, tool rank. I've got um, some blue point spanner that uh, was recommended to me. And if you don't know, I, I believe blue point are a subsidiary of Snap On. It's kind of like their budget range, if you like. Um, and um, they're rubbish. They're an absolute fortune. And the ratchet packed up on them within two weeks. And I'm not a heavy user. I, I, you know, I'm only an amateur mechanic, like so. I don't use it that much. But they were rubbish. Now I've got Halfords Advanced and Halfords Professional Tools. And say what you like about Halfords. And yes, I agree. I, I don't like anybody that says that they can fit a set of windscreen wipers for seven quid and think it's okay. Um, their tools are brilliant. I don't know who makes them. I presume it's not Halfords. It'll be a company working for Halfords or on behalf of Halfords, whatever it is. But yeah, the tools are really good. I am well impressed. So. What do we do now? That's the heater pipe, so that comes up, that joins in with the matrix, and then that's another one for the matrix. Uh, so that's lovely little heater control. Your cable goes into there, pulls into there, and rum rum rum. You can turn your heating on and off without having to get out of the car and go under the bonnet. Um, so, taps on, gaskets on. Sump plugs on. Um, filters done. That one can go probably go in the bin. I mean, it's it's covered in cracks. It's I know this camera probably won't focus on it, but it's in pretty rough shape. But the tap itself is okay, so I will probably try and get it out of the uh, um, bracket and. And see what happens. Let's give it a go. God, time. You won't believe me. Right, let's bring you over. Let's, oh, sorry about that. There we go. Very good. Right. What do you reckon? Is it going to disintegrate? I think it's going to disintegrate. You tell me what it's going to do. Well, I mean, whoever was sat over there on the sofa shouting at me going, oh, that's never going to disintegrate, good old quality British stuff. I don't think there's anybody saying that, by the way. Um, the tap is okay. 
I mean the threads are not bad again I don't think this camera will focus but however <laughs> they're, they're, they're oh dear oh, oh dear <laughs> there is no thread left on that at all it's just completely shot so I shall stick that in the uh, in the bin but the tap's okay we'll keep that I'll chuck it in the box of parts Let me swap my gloves, I'll put some clean gloves on. Um, a bit of a stickler for I don't want to get the camera dirty. You know, I'm doing all of these dirty jobs. But I don't want to get anything dirty. So. Uh, uh, okay, let's bring you over here. Look, right, just to like show you that I'm not joking there's a, a great big box here and uh, it's literally just full of various different parts of front shock absorbers for the midget oh that's where that box went anyway uh, spare headlights there's a twin set there midget's dizzy because um, it's got a new dizzy on it which is on actually on old points that one um, fuel pumps Spare radiator covers, window sliders, I've got all sorts. Um, but uh, these are, I got these, I'm, I'm pointing it over here, that's no good for you, is it? Um, I got these from the MG and Triumph show uh, over Staffordshire Way a couple of years ago. Um, and they're basically brand new refurb, well, brand new refurbished, if you want to call them. They've, um, they've been completely rebuilt now there's a bit of surface rust on them because they've been sat for so long and the story behind that is that I found a trader let me turn because I've just realised the microphone's the wrong way and you probably won't be able to hear me um, there was a trader at um, at the MG and Triumph show that uh, that was selling these and the um, I was dead proud of myself. I went over to him, uh, haggled with him, and managed to get the pair for thirty quid, which is the last bit of cash I had left on me because he didn't take cards. Um, I didn't have anything more on me, so I was dead proud. I thought I need some rear shocks. Brilliant, he thought. Haggled with the guy, got him for thirty quid, got in the car, and then realised that I've got front ones and not rear. Brill. But the ones that are on the midget currently uh, need refurbing. So um, probably some point during the winter I'll take them off, put these ones on and then send the other ones back for refurb and then I've got a, a pair of spares. Uh, but what I might do is get them updated to the, um, the slightly higher spec oil so that they're a little bit uh, stiffer on the, uh, on the turny bendy bits. And then I'll do the same for the rears at some point, so it stiffens the car up a little bit because it's a little bit soft, not as soft as it was on the old uh, shocks. But there we go. So waffling. The engine, um, as you can can see, the uh, is is pretty much back together. I'm going to clean and paint this fan. I'll stick you on time lapse, and we'll do that now. Clean and paint the fan. Um, and then get that stuck back on uh, and then the engine is pretty much done um, I need to get some oil um, but I won't oil it up until it's back in the car so uh, yeah the engine is pretty much done and rebuilt at that point so that'll be the end of this little mini series and then we're on to the gearboxes now I'll tell you the story of that in that video. It's it's very bizarre. This this gearbox here, and then my gearbox. I have to f forgive the mess slightly, but my gearbox is down there. So um, this is a, a a worker. Apart from it's got a little bit of a problem, but we'll again we'll go into that into the video. Um, so yeah, let's get this fan sorted. We'll get that back on. And then the engine is pretty much done. Um, I'll give you a, a close up around it um, uh, just now. So, as you can see, 
she's looking a lot better than she did um, got this new tap up the top here it's all painted Dizzy distributors back on that's electronic the um, alternator like I explained brand new oil filter ready to receive the oil oh, just climb around here sorry for the jerky camera um, that I managed to beat that back into shape uh, after bending it when I tried to take it off because I'm an idiot um, so hopefully that doesn't leak oil I mean it will leak oil because it's a British engine and they leak oil but I'd rather it didn't leak oil for something I've done anyway uh, manifolds back on painted that in some uh, high temperature paint uh, and that's ready to receive the carburetor which is in the car um, and that's it that's it really I've not gone and done like full refurb and brand spanking new bolts and all that lot because it wasn't long ago that I replaced them all when I did the head gasket before so um, there's no point in replacing good parts as you can see this is this pipe here is was brand new when I did the head as were the head bolts um, the water pump uh, rocker cover gasket although I've replaced it obviously um, and there was a couple of other things that were new as well so yeah she's uh, she's looking a lot smarter than she did don't get me wrong she's no concourse engine um, that wasn't the intention of this uh, this particular uh, rebuild I wasn't intending on rebuilding it at all but uh, I thought we'll give it a freshen up make it look at least a little bit prettier um, and then it's uh, it's ready to go back in the car so yeah there we go right let's do this fan and then that's this series a little bit smarter I know they're not red and I know they're not yellow and they should be but it's a cooling fan uh, it, they just need to work so I've tidied them up painted it black it will go back on the engine once they've dried uh, I've put the dizzy cap back on just to keep the dust out of the um, uh, distributor itself and uh, yeah engines done now excuse the mess I thought I'd just check under the bonnet of Maggie I'd just check to make sure that the hoses were long enough for the matrix which they they are I, sh I might actually need to trim them down a little bit but just just a quick one for anybody that's a radiator expert is there, is that that normal that you know it should yeah I, I don't think that's normal I think I need a new radiator so yeah more bloody cost anyway well that's the uh, the engine done like I say I'll um, include a picture um, at the end of this video of the uh, engine with the fan on it uh, just so you can see it as complete as it can be out of the car um, and then next we'll move on to the gearbox so we'll strip that down have a look at what's uh, up with that get that fixed then we can get it back in the car just in time for winter when I won't use it brilliant anyway thanks for watching everyone if you like the video give us a like um, subscribe to the video if you want to follow us along on these crazy journeys that we do you know I know we're not uh, a, the biggest youtubers in the world but we uh, we enjoy sharing the content with you so it's uh, it's nice if you could come along for the ride and 95% of the people that watched the last video that we put up which was the first engine first part of the engine build weren't subscribed I mean 95% that's fairly huge isn't it so uh, yeah if you could uh, give us a subscribe that'd be great anyway uh, we'll see you in the next one